Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 1st, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got uh, two Amazon cloud-related items to start out with. Uh, first, a guest diary by Remke Verhoff. Now, what he did was he set up a little web server within Amazon's cloud and then just restarted it every 10 minutes for four months at a time. During that time, uh, he was able uh, to intercept a large number of requests that were not destined to any domains that he ran on that web server. Apparently what was happening there was that Amazon is reusing IPv4 addresses rather quickly within its cloud. That's a common problem in that many cloud providers do have a shortage of IPv4 addresses and then requests, of course, that were destined for a prior user of that IP address are still being received. Many of the requests that he received came via Amazon's CloudFront service, which is a proxy service that Amazon offers to its customers. Also, some of these requests really didn't make sense. Uh, for example, he had requests from a, a Vietnamese ISP that went via multiple proxy hops, some of them the UK Department of Defense, and ended then up in his little honeypot via Amazon CloudFront. So some of those details are still work in progress, but Remco did notify Amazon and Amazon did implement what they are calling a cooldown procedure for IPv4 addresses. So essentially to avoid reusing IPv4 addresses too quickly. But in other Amazon Cloud news, Amazon also had a pretty significant outage in its S3. That's the simple storage service. It affected the region US East 1. So customers that relied on storage in that region reported outages for their websites. This affected a large number of different sites in particular. You may have found, for example, images on sites missing that were stored via S3. According to Amazon's status page, the incident started around 11.30 a.m. Pacific and lasted till about 2 p.m. Pacific. If you have been listening to this podcast for a while, then you probably realize that the idea of using children's toys with microphones that record your children's voice and send it up in the cloud is a pretty stupid idea. In particular, if you save the data in a MongoDB database without passwords, this apparently happened to Cloud Pets, Cloud Pets uh, database got found via Shodan and apparently recordings from customers and usernames and passwords were stored in an open MongoDB. Overall, about 800,000 user accounts and 2 million voice recordings were available via this particular leak. And apparently, the database was also accessed several times, at least four times. People tried to reach the company to notify them, and according to content in the databases, also various MongoDB ransomware attempts were made against this company. And well, antivirus on Macs is a little bit of a controversial issue and uh, one more argument now against it is that ESET antivirus for the Mac used an out-of-date XML parser library that included an arbitrary code execution vulnerability. So by sending a malicious message that's then going to be parsed by ESET, it was possible for an attacker to execute arbitrary code. A proof of concept exploit has been made available that will crash ESET antivirus and ESET also came out with a new version fixing this particular vulnerability. 
And Xavier posted a reverse analysis of a pretty straightforward and simple PHP backdoor. He found it on a compromised system. It's only about five kilobytes in size and Xavier does a great job here sort of walking you through the decode of the various obfuscation techniques used by this backdoor. So if you're running into something similar, maybe a compromised Drupal or WordPress host on your network, uh, you may want to appreciate uh, the work he has done for you here because you probably can use some of that analysis. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.